All right, so before we uh, move forward with doing the initial setup setup with the KK 2.1 and getting all the motors, motor layout configured and whatnot, uh, just kind of a brief recap of what we have uh, done so far at this point. So obviously we have the, the Daryl in protection box for the KK 2.1 just for protection and to, to mount it. Um, from here we have the wiring from the electronic uh, speed controllers so underneath each one of these these booms here uh, which in turn power the the motors um, I did have to modify the very very first of the ESC's uh, because they in order to provide power to the board so I don't know if you can see it in here but I have a UBEC underneath here yeah, I can see right from this angle I'll throw a picture up so you guys can get a better idea of what it looks like. But it's mounted underneath here, and basically I just uh, modified it to attach to the the first the first position on the uh, on the board here. So that actually these actually these two leads here are actually providing power to the the flight controller. We have the receiver um, hooked in to where I have all all five leads going here. I also modified um, this J JST connector here. This 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 goes in and actually uh, allows you to use both the speaker, the audible speaker, and the LED indicator, which I attached back here on the back of the receiver. And so those that all that wiring jumbles coming right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's speakers located right here. And then again, my the LEDs there. And we also have our our voltage monitor. This goes directly from the battery lead, plug into the board as well, so that the board can monitor voltage and, and give us an indicator when it gets low. So that's good there. Also from these leads we have our, our directional LEDs coming out, um, attached to each one of the booms. And I have uh, basically green on the front, red on the back, directional purposes. And uh, we also have the the antenna mount that I created using a piece of of uh, acrylic I had left over from one of my computer liquid cooled computer uh, builds that I did recently so that worked out pretty well I got it at a nice 90 degree angle which is recommended so that's the basic layout of the of the quad itself and you'll notice I have I have tape currently on the on the motors as we're going to be testing out uh, to verify that the motor direction is correct and and you always want to do that with the props off never have those installed when you're actually doing any programming at all on the board and the tape will help us uh, verify dire direction of motor spin so let's go ahead and plug her in and we'll go from there alright so now that we've gone through that little demonstration we're going to go ahead and bind our our transmitter controller over to the receiver um, one note with mine specifically I have telemetry turned on so I have to do a little bit of a different binding procedure um, you'll notice that these two servo leads are, are unplugged and uh, I'll show you why here in just a sec I actually have to, you're supposed to use a jumper on the actual receiver you know, these little jumper guys here to um, connect the signal pins for channels 1 and 2 but since I have everything already, already plugged in it's just easier for me to use a, kind of a makeshift jumper on these servo leads than it is to, to use one of these guys so we'll do that right now And again, uh, the signal lead is the white on these particular cables, but it's basically the inside, the inside pin is the signal lead. So first, we're gonna put the receiver and turn it into, into the binding mode. So do that in the back of here. I'm just gonna hold on this button right here while turning on the transmitter. See that light starts, that LED starts flashing. And now we're going to do the same thing for the receiver. I'm just going to use this little um, uh, hex driver here. I'm going to put, you depress this button inside the receiver right here while plugging it into the, the power. Alright, so now they're both flashing red. So once you verify they're both flashing, go ahead and unplug the receiver. Power off the transmitter. 
power back on the transmitter. And plug the receiver back in. And now they're both solid red, so you know that pairing has been completed. So, good to go there. Alright, so with everything, uh, the transmitter and the receiver having the pairing process completed, now we're going to go in and do some of the basic uh, initial settings for the KK2.1. So here we have our primary startup screen that, that you see when you plug in the quad and, and everything all powered up. Uh, first thing we're going to do, uh, it's a good idea to do the factory reset if it's your very first time messing around with stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump straight over to the sensors and make sure that our, all of our sensors are reading correctly. So I'm going to go to sensor test, enter, and just verify that everything's saying okay across the board. So it looks like we're good there. Next up is AAC calibration. Just telling you to place it on a level surface. All right, so verify everything's level, hit continue. Let's do a little countdown here. Good to go. Calibration successful. So next we're going to mode settings. And just verify that uh, link and roll pitch are supposed to say yes here. Now we're going to go over to miscellaneous settings and make sure your height damping is set to zero and then also you uh, the the voltage alarm. Now if I'm using a 3S LiPo so I'm setting mine to 105 which means 10.5 volts if you're using a different type of LiPo you might have to modify that depending on your on your uh, battery Alright, so now we're going to go to the motor, uh, motor settings and layout. I've already done this, but we're going to show it again just to make sure we have everything set up correctly. I'm going to go load motor layout, hit enter. Again, I already have quad X selected, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. So quadcopter X mode. Just verifying you want to do that. And then it shows the motor layout. You have motor 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now it's going to go through and, and verify the direction for each motor. So, motor 1, clockwise. Motor 2, counterclockwise. Motor 3, clockwise. Motor 4, counterclockwise. Let's go back, go back, and then we're just going to go up here, show motor layout. Again, show the thing we just saw there. So, that is good. Now that everything's verified to be correct, we're going to jump into the actual receiver test. Alright, so from then you we're going to go to receiver test. Enter. And basically we're just going to move around um, some of the sticks on our, on our transmitter to verify that everything's um, correct on, on this setup here. So I'm just going to move my throttle up and down. So everything's good there, going from 0 to, zero to 100 rudder left and right so it looks like my my rudder is actually backwards so I'm going to have to go back through and and uh, fix that up elevator up so we have and then we have our aileron and that one's correct for me so good there so my channels are all, are all correct um, but my rudder channel which is my channel 4 is actually backwards so when I when I go to the right it, it shows up as left so um, everything else is fine. I just going to need to change that one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right. So to reverse to reverse a channel um, with the 9XR with the most current firmware, uh, basically you just go to uh, this menu seven reverse. And so I went down to channel four. And you just toggle normal to reverse. So now now my channel should read correctly. Or the direction should. I'm sorry. You exit. 
Go drop down. Either on. All right, so now let's go back to the quad. So now when I go left or when I go right on my rudder, it reads right, left, and then again. Everything else is just working great. Auxiliary is also, again, my um, automatic uh, self-leveling. leveling. So you can see that when I flip that switch, auxiliary responds. So good to go there. Now we'll go ahead and trim out the channels just to make sure that they line up zero. Mine are really close, so not a whole lot to do here. All right, so everything's been trimmed out correctly. We're zeros down the down the row and good to go. So next step is we're going to go ahead and jump into some of the uh, edits from the PI limits and whatnot and go from there. Okay, so we're going to go menu. We're going to jump into the PI editor. We want this to read, let's go 30. For the P gain, for the uh, roll P gain, leave that at a hundred. I gain, we're going to change that to zero. And that one's good at twenty. Now, since everything's linked, if I go to, if I go to elevator, it's it's going to be the same since everything's been linked already. So now I go to rudder. And for this one, 50 is good there, 20 is good. We're going to go 0. And then 10 is good for that as well. Now we're going to jump over to self-level settings. And here, just uh, we're going to go 70 and 20, so we're just going to modify this one a tiny bit. That one is good, so we're just going to jump back from there. All right, so some of the some of the basic uh, settings you'll tweak with now. Those are just kind of a baseline to start with. You're going to need to modify those as you go and as you kind of get a better feel for how performance of the of the quad and whatnot. But uh, that's a good, good a good starting point. So now we are going to jump over to um, ESC throttle calibration. All right, so we're just gonna quickly calibrate the ESCs. All right, so first thing we gotta do, it's armed and paired. We just gotta, we have to arm the uh, the motors here. So just pull these two control sticks down and in. So now it says arms, audible, beep, flash. So now it actually, you know, revs up. So to calibrate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug, huh. unplug the drone. I'm going to go ahead and crank the throttle to 100%. Hold down these uh, buttons one and four while plugging it in. All right, throttle pass through yeah, enabled. So I can bring it down now. Again, we're going to arm it. Now they should all spin up at the exact same time. So that's good. And aside from testing, uh, I just have little pieces of tape on here to test the direction of the spin. And I already noticed after watching some of these that these are all spinning counterclockwise, so you got to modify that. One other thing you can test while it's set up like this, um, you can verify that your your auto lev your leveling settings are correct, so you can turn it to like 50%. And then if you lower one of the arms, that arm should uh, struggle more. So you can hear it rev up more. So again, just an easy way to test to make sure everything's working how it should. And that's it for calibration. So let me go ahead and switch around some of these wires to make sure my direction is correct and uh, go from there.